potentially saving your organization and yourself tons of headache, massive cost overruns, lots of stress, time overruns, reputational, the reputational risk. There may be legal obligations that your company has to deliver by certain deadlines that would incur a penalty. Like the impact, right, of you missing this step is so huge. BA Blocks, the building blocks for your BA career. When was the last time that you performed impact analysis on any of your projects? And if your answer to that is never, or if your answer to that is what is impact analysis, then this video is for you. You'll notice immediately that we're not in the studio today, so I'm not going to have all the illustrations, but please bear with me because this is a very important subject that gets very little attention, but is really important for your ability to build a solid product backlog. In this video, you're gonna learn exactly about what impact analysis is, why you should be performing it, and what the consequences are of you not actually performing impact analysis on your projects. And I'm gonna be walking you through a couple of scenarios to explain to you in a very crystal clear way about the difference between doing impact analysis and not doing it. And then you can start to see what the outcomes of each of those different scenarios is, so you get the real understanding of the importance of impact analysis, okay? So what is impact analysis? Impact analysis is an activity that an analyst goes through to make sure that they understand the full impacts of the requirements that they're about to implement, okay? So let's think about a scenario where you are working with your clients to understand their business requirements and you're starting to document them in a format that describes the features and the functions that you're gonna expect the project team to build into the system and you skip the impact analysis and what you do is you start to build your product backlog that product backlog goes through whatever um, methodology your project team is using. If it's agile, they might use Scrum or Kanban. If it's a traditional waterfall, then they'll follow that process. But your job as an analyst to get the product backlog ready, get it prioritized and let them start to build it out, right? That is a scenario that skips impact analysis. And what tends to happen in these types of projects is that your project team goes down to a certain point in the development process and they start to run into issues that they would not have run into if you had performed your impact analysis upfront on your requirements before you built the backlog, all right? Those types of issues, let me give you a couple of examples. So let's say, for example, you're working on an HR system and one of the requirements that your customer has given you requires you to, let's say, change the position structure or the organization structure that is built into the HR system. So if you take those requirements for your customers in this first scenario without impact analysis, put them into the product backlog, you detail them out for the developers and you push them into the development cycle, your developers are eventually gonna run into uh, a clash with potentially some other developers, some other configurators and part of the organization that is in the finance space. And your finance developers, analysts, et cetera, are gonna come back to you way down the line as you're in development and they're gonna say, no, no, you can't make these changes because we have a dependency in the finance world on some of the changes you're looking to make, right? And in the HR space, this is probably one of the most common ones that I run into in that when an organization starts changing something in their world, it starts to affect something in somebody else's world that this project team has very limited view into. That is the classic example, is a, is a quintessential example of where impact analysis is needed. And the reason why it doesn't get a lot of attention is because the way that business analysis is typically taught makes certain assumptions that are wrong about the environments in which you work, right? So if you think about it, is, is that the way that analysis is taught, the way that a lot of agile concepts are taught, assumes that you're building a single product that is a standalone product. In that world, impact analysis is not even required. But that scenario is an ideal scenario that is very rare barrier, probably one of the rarest scenarios that you're going to run into, right? So that's the reason why it doesn't get attention. And in scenario number one, if you don't perform your impact analysis properly, your project is going to run into massive cost overruns. And there may be a chance that your management comes to you and says, what happened, right? What, why are we running into this issue now where we have a team over here who is preventing us from a change that is critical to the project that we're starting to try to deploy. And now we've run into this major roadblock might be a showstopper it, and these types, some of these types of issues have the potential to completely derail a project and have the company waste money right and so these types of things happen 
in the scenario when you don't perform your impact analysis. Let's talk about the second scenario where you as, let's say, an intermediate or senior level analyst have performed your due diligence, which includes that you having performed impact analysis or impact assessment on the set of requirements that you're expecting your project team to build. In this scenario, you have a lot of conversations with your customers and your other stakeholders that may be sources of requirements. And before you start to build your product backlog, before you start to introduce that to the development team and get them to start mobilizing themselves to start building, you perform your impact analysis, which requires you to do the following things. Number one is that you group your requirements into a set of requirements that are kind of related to each other. And if you have the domain knowledge that is needed and the systems knowledge, you can actually think through the implementation of those requirements and start to identify some of the areas, some of the touch points in other parts of the organization, in the other parts of the company's application portfolio or application landscape that are going to be impacted. And as soon as you identify one of those, you take those items and you add them to the scope. You add them to the backlog of items that need to be addressed. And you go through this process for each set of requirements that you've identified and the, and the outcome of your impact analysis typically has to result in zero impact or no impact from implementing this, or there are a number of other changes that need to be made in other parts of the organization, potentially other parts of uh, the other applications that your product is tied to that also need to be factored into your backlog. And what that does is that before you even kick off into your sprints or you before you even kick off into whatever methodology you're using to build, you have a full product backlog. And when your system architect or your application architect or your senior developer gets involved, they have a very clear picture of exactly what needs to be built because not only do they have a list of the features that the customer wants, but they now have a list of the other impacts that are likely gonna require your project team to build interfaces to other systems or it's going to impact existing interfaces or it is potentially going to act as a constraint on your requirements, right? So you can see how if you do your job properly upfront, you're starting to identify a lot of issues that would be very expensive to address down the line. You're starting to address a lot of those issues right up front. Project team has a very clear idea of the full scope, and now they're starting to architect your solution. And with respect, they're starting to architect your solution with respect to the other solutions that exist inside the organization. They're taking the dependencies between all of these applications that sometimes can be very complex into account. And the result of your impact analysis or the result of that first backlog review that you do with your team and as they start architecting it can be a couple of different things. I can talk about that in another video, but as an analyst, if you perform this step at the right time, right, in the right way, you're potentially saving your organization and yourself tons of headache massive cost overruns, lots of stress, uh, time overruns. If it's an external product that other customers outside your organizations depend on, you're saving the company reputational, the reputational risk of not meeting their deadlines. There may be legal obligations that your company has to deliver by certain deadlines that would incur a penalty, like the impact, right, of you missing this step is so huge and I don't see it getting addressed. It's a problem that I'm gonna be fixing in our program because impact analysis is a key step that I'm gonna be teaching, that I do teach and will be continuing to teach in future sessions. But for now, you should just understand, just understand that this is a critical, critical aspect. You're, it's very unlikely that you're gonna hear a lot about this because it's not one of these things that markets very well, right? A lot of programs out there wanna talk about Scrum Masters. They wanna talk about product backlogs. They wanna talk about the things that are popular that a lot of people are searching for in the web and impact analysis is not one of those things. But you can start to see now how things that may be popular are not necessarily the things that you need for your career. I'm gonna leave this message off with that because there are a lot of other things that an analyst is supposed to do that do not get any attention and I'll be speaking about those in subsequent videos. 
I hope you don't mind the environment. I'm trying to enjoy the weather, the short bursts of good weather that we get here in Canada as much as I can by doing my morning walks through the woods and uh, I'm enjoying it very much. So please bear with me. I will be back in the studio for, uh, for the next set of videos that we do. I'll probably do a couple, of, couple more outside as we're doing like this because I wanna continue to bring these things to you, but bear with me. I'll be back in the studio soon. See you in the next one.